Well, Love Island has certainly won plenty of fans, but some critics have raised concerns about the messages the show sends out to young viewers. They include issues about body image, with some questioning why so many of the contestants look alike. But a spokesperson for the show has said they strive to reflect the age, experiences and diversity of the audience. Well, to discuss this further, I'm joined by psychologist Honey Lancaster-James, who's worked on Love Island, and body image consultant Grace Barrett. Grace, um, sorry, I was going to start with you, honey, actually. <laughs> sorry, millions no, of viewers okay. this year have tuned in mm. to watch Love Island. These are pretty well-groomed contestants. How much pressure are they under to look good? Well, I don't know if they're under pressure once they're on the show, but obviously, yes, it is an entertainment at the end of the day, and they are selecting people who are of, of much above average uh, attraction. But I think we can't be too cynical about that, because at the end of the day, we do know from basic social psychology that we are attracted to people who are of a similar level of attractiveness to ourselves. So if they want love to blossom, if they want that holiday romance show they are going to have to pick a fairly homogenous set of people homogenous set of people but they do face scrutiny mm, don't they they do between each other and also from people that watch the show and that can have a damaging effect it can be very stressful that's true and that's why i'm um, so so i work quite a lot in reality television and that's why there is quite a, a an important pre-screening uh, process where we we put people through various psychometric tests usually and assessments to check that they know what they're letting themselves in for as much as you can when it's something that's so unique and there's always uh, on set support as well and all the production companies I've ever worked for have taken that very very seriously. Well Grace, lots of people watched this show, yeah. particularly young women. I mean we saw in that report there about Love Island that people are going into plastic surgeons asking you know, to look like the people on the telly. That's damaging isn't it as well? It's really scary when you hear things like that of course. Um, I think what we need to get better at doing is understanding that thought process. I think for so long we sort of belittled and diminished that thought process. Um, but we hear that these stars make thousands and thousands of pounds. Beauty and success have often been synonymous and this is no different. And so I think what's really important is we start to challenge that beauty is the only way that you can be successful. So when we work in schools at Self Esteem Team, that's what we do with young people. So you see the winners of the show there, Jack and Danny, they actually traded on doing everything from the heart and their honesty with each other and being real and that's actually really exciting that you have a couple that were very loyal to each other that supported each other throughout some difficulties and young people are watching that I think that there are some great things that you can take away from a show like Love Island mm -hmm. and it's important that we all understand that not everybody is built that way um, so there's a lot of work to do on both sides of the fence but I think it's amazing that there's a show like this that's uh, encouraging this kind of conversation of young people. But what about the diversity as well? Because that's been talked about a lot, particularly on social media with this particular series. Yeah, I mean, I think you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that there is very little diversity in this show. Um, and I would love to believe, and I'm an eternal optimist, so I might be incorrect here, but I'd love to think that that might be a next step for a show like Love Island, whether that's diversity in terms of ethnicity or whether that's to do with sexuality. Um, there's a long way that this could go and this could be an amazing platform to start to challenge our beauty ideals and challenge our understanding of sexuality and gender. It would be awesome if they were to do something like that. Well, honey, you worked on the show. The contestants are now out. It's all finished and done and dusted, as they say. Now, lots it's of these just beginning for some of them. Just yeah. beginning for some of yeah. them. Um, yeah. They weren't household names before. They are mm. household names now. Yeah. What challenges will they face? Uh, there are undoubted challenges uh, when you go in uh, uh, anonymous and you come out this face, and people are calling your name and taking pictures of you everywhere you go. Uh, it's undoubtedly stressful. Um, I have conducted some research with people who've been through a variety of different reality TV shows. The vast majority of people say. Actually, Actually, I would do it again. Uh, I got more positives than negatives. But, you know, as we've already seen earlier on the clip there, um, there are some negatives to that. And I think social media is a big part of that. Um, I always feel very distressed, actually, when I see people speaking to people in really quite abusive ways that they wouldn't say to your face or in real life. Um, and that's of concern. But that affects anybody with a public profile and with a, with a media image. But is the help there for these contestants, say, a year on when they might need it? Well, it very much 
does depend on the production company and it varies from production to production that I've worked on. Um, the best ones, they will allow for a certain level of aftercare if they can, but we also have to be realistic that not everybody reaches out for help. Um, those of us who do work with people, you know, we do get people come and see us, but, but some people don't want that kind of help. I also think that's where general education around mental health, well-being and self-esteem mm. becomes so important. If you have a reality TV generation, you need to educate that generation on how to look after their brains before they walk into that kind of space. Unfortunately, we're going to have yeah. to leave it there, but Honey and Grace, thank you for coming Pleasure, in to talk you. to us.